I've got the bomber in the shop now, and uh, this is where this little scissor lift that I've got really comes in handy because I'm just basically going to pull all the suspension out uh, for this trip to Fabtech, leave the rest of the chassis alone for now. Um, it does eventually all have to get stripped down if I'm going to powder coat it, which I think is the plan now. But um, for Fabtech, I think I'm just going to leave a bunch of stuff in place. I think it's going to look a little bit cooler. Uh, as it is. These are the changes that I want to make to this car. So first change is spring rate. So Randy gave me a ballpark spring rate. Or sp Randy gave me a ballpark spring rate. So this is a 150 over a 200 in the back and then the front, sorry, 150 over 150 in the back and then a 150 over 200 in the front. And in order to get it to, in order to get it to sit right, you can see I had to run the spring collars down a lot. Like there's four inches of uh, thread showing right here. And that's because I did 14s and 14s. Um, these were sh these were supposed to be short body Bilstein shocks. So normally when you're on a short body Bilstein, a 14 and a 14 just barely fits. But there was lots of slop in there. So I don't really think these are short bodies. I think these are actually long bodies. So what I did is I ordered a 16 inch lower and I've upped the spring rate by 25 pounds for all my lowers. So what I'm gonna end up with is a 175 on the back, on the bottom. So 175, 16 on the back, and then a 150, 14 upper. And then up front, I'll have a 220, sorry, up front, I'll have the 225 and a 150. The 16 inch should allow me to lose all of this uh, preload that I had to put in here to get it to sit right and then more importantly uh, I think that that extra 25 pounds is needed just because my car is set up a little bit differently than the other bombers that are out there so the things that are different are um, my front shock is a lot further back normally Randy runs this shock basically uh, from here and it comes straight down and picks up this tube adapter almost he said get it as close to the heim as you could we can see my leading arm has the shock further back so that means that there's more of a mechanical advantage on that shock so i think that's what is affecting the spring rate and then on the back i think i have my shocks at just a little bit more of an angle than randy normally runs i think his shocks are a little bit further up on his trailing arm and when you lean a shock over what you're doing is you're basically lowering the spring rate of that shock think about it this way if a spring holds up 150 pounds per inch uh, of compression when it's sitting straight up and down well if it was sitting at flat 90 degrees on a table it would hold up zero because it's sideways so if you take that spring and move it from vertical to any angle in between you're actually losing spring rate as you go so even though you have a 200 pound spring rate when it's sitting straight up and down if you put that at 45 degrees you're actually only I, the math is not exactly half but you'd actually be using about half of that spring rate so that 200 pound spring would now be maybe a 100 pound spring um so that's what happens when you do a shakedown rig on a buggy like this I just immediately took it out and I sort of felt like I was getting into the bumps a little more than I wanted to. You can see the rear hydro bump. You can see how much of it I was using. And I really wasn't going that fast. And I felt it kick hard a couple times on the back when we we're doing some high speed stuff. So changing the spring rate. I'm also going to change a couple of bars. We put this bar in just last minute dash bar. We thought it would look good. I hate it. I don't think it looks good. I don't like where we mounted the orbital um, when we were mocking it all up. I thought to myself, yeah, that would be a perfect spot for the orbital. Hate it. Don't like it up there. I think it looks ugly as all get out. I don't like where my um, PSC reservoir is when I was mocking it up. I thought, yeah, that'll be awesome. But now that I see it on the car, hate it. Need to move that. I don't like it. Um, Randy runs a bar from here down and up across on these. And he does that mainly for this uh, lateral stability. I really saw no deflection in this tube at all when we were wheeling, but I do think I want to add a bar from this joint. I added this tube to the chassis. This did not come with our kit. And I think what I'm going to end up doing is going from here to here with a bar. And then again, from here back to here to this joint right here. And I think that'll just kind of finish out the look. I think that'll give me a spot to change where the orbital is 
and then I'll also be able to uh, clean up this sort of dash bar look. Um, I'm going to keep it like this on the inside. I will do a tunnel over the transmission. We just never had time to do it, but we did cut these little floorboards. So I'm going to go ahead and get those knocked. Those, those, these are going to stay. Um, and I am going to do a skin on the side and a skin on the roof. And that is it. I may, um, if I do this tube that goes from here to here, I may do a skin on top of that. And I actually may put a little bit of storage in it. I haven't decided yet. I think that'd be kind of cool. I notice it. Um, I've seen that on a couple of Shannon Campbell's cars. He'll put a toe strap on there. And I think that might be a good spot to do that. Um, and then aside from that, nothing else really. I like everything else about the car. The car works so good, like no joke. It just works so good. As I continue to strip down the bomber, uh, there's just a few things that I'm working on. I told you I was going to change spring rate, change a couple things. I'm also going to be painting and coating some stuff. So these are my lower control arms. I'm going to clean them up. They worked incredibly well. I'm just going to scuff them down and I'm going to give them a coat of paint. The reason that I paint stuff like this instead of powder coat it is because of this. I'll show you on the bottom of this control arm. You can see. Oh. It actually got into some rocks pretty good on the trail. There's a couple of big scores in here. Scoring. So they did their job. That bottom plate, that bottom skid plate is actually removable. So, well, you got to cut it off and re-weld it. But that's what that is there for. That's an actual skid plate for that arm. What I really loved on the teardown was having these uh, weld washers to hold the bolts in place because it just made taking it apart a lot easier. So I'm actually going to add these to these lower control arms. Uh, once I got them cleaned up and then I think I'm just going to paint those probably a flat black. I think the arms are going to be flat black. The axles are going to be flat black. The chassis I'm going back and forth. It's either going to be steels it gray. I've got some steels it that I want to paint it or I may send it out and get it powder coated. I haven't officially decided yet. Um, I like the idea of painting it with the steels it because then if I ever have to make a repair to it in the future or change it, that's easily done. I also like powder coat because it looks really cool. Uh, it's probably going to boil down to a flip of the coin in the end. I think steals it would be better because it's kind of more race car like and the car's kind of a race car. So, or at least looks like a race car. So I think I'm going to be leaning towards the steals it. Also, I can do the steals it here, which will make life a lot easier. Now that's done on the trailing arms i want to start adding some more tubes to this chassis now i've got this upper shock mount right here and we add, i added this tube down below now randy runs a bar basically across the chassis in about this location it basically goes across goes down and goes up i don't really want to do that i think what i'm going to do instead is i'm going to run a bar basically from here from this joint up to this joint right here and then i'm going to run one from this joint back to this joint right here that should give me all the strength that i need um, on that upper shock mount i might add a piece of flat plate in between the two shock mounts just to act as a support because i might put a super small little hood piece on here i haven't decided yet 
I might just go ahead and put two triangle pieces on either side. I'm thinking if I do, I think it would look cool if I just do like a, a piece of tubing from here to here and then put a panel there and then the same on the opposite side. So I'm going to go ahead and make these and then I'll make those. That dash bar is going away. I don't like it. I didn't like it in the car. Um, we only tossed it in there just to see because we thought, oh, this is a perfect spot for a dash bar when we were building it. Um, but once we wheeled it, I don't like how it looks. I think it looks goofy. I think if I put those two crossbars in there, I think it'll look a lot better. making stuff like this it's just a lot of trips back and forth to the grinder to get everything right because basically I have I have a notch that's gonna land right here which is not that difficult basically this angled notch right here but then over here I basically have this notch it's gonna hit this tube and this down bar so you can see it's a little bit a little bit of a interesting notch but when it's all said and done it's gonna drop in there fit good and tight around here and when you're doing this, you want to make sure that you also check the underside of the notch, make sure there's not any big gap there. And then on this side up here, you kind of got to decide where it's going to land. I think what I'm going to do is actually take a little bit more out of the inside of this notch because what I want is I want the edge of this tube to line up with the outside of that tube. So I'm just going to grind a little bit more away on that and then it should fit perfect. All right, so it's a new day here in the shop. Today I'm going to jump back on the bomber car. Still knocking out a bunch of stuff on it. I'm really trying to get it to the point where uh, I can fully tear it down, decide whether I'm going to powder coat it or paint it or whatever. So today's goal is I want to get rid of this, uh, get rid of this dash bar that we put in temporarily. Um, I've already added these front tubes. I'm going to relocate that power steering reservoir i think it's going to end up actually over in that opening there and uh then i think i'll actually um might start working on a couple panels for it some of the aluminum for it um get that done i'll have to cut tabs for those to be bolted onto but i might jump on the plasma cutter do that i'm going to add a couple of gussets here and there that i want to add uh and then i think that might be that might be about it then we're probably at, oh, some tabs for a couple off-road lights that I want to put on. And uh, then we'll go from there. But that's, that's the plan for today. When you're working on these super complicated notches like this, what I actually like to do is just sort of start the notch, I've ground that out over on my uh, on my grinder, and then it's gonna land somewhere in here. Obviously, I gotta open up this inside section. I gotta open it up in here a little bit more to get it to sit right. But in order to get it to slide in there further, you can see this tube right here needs to come in. So one way, I'm gonna try and do this with one hand here. Here we go. So quick and easy way to sort of figure out where that tube is going to hit this is get yourself a paint pen like this and just rest the edge of the paint pen on the tube and just walk it all the way around just like this like that okay like that 
Now that gives me basically an outline of where I need to start grinding to get this notch to fit. Um, yeah, I could have notched it, ground it, and then test fitted a bunch of times, but you're always kind of guessing, especially when you got tubes coming out of multiple planes like that. So basically I have one that's basically flat and then I have one coming in at a high pitch like this. So that just sort of gives me an idea of where to start. What I'll do is I'll just sneak up on that line. I'll actually grind right to, I won't grind right to the line. Let me get the, in the picture here. Where is it? Uh, there it is. So what I'll do is I'll grind to this side of the line first and then I'll test fit it. And then if it fits good, needs a little bit of trimming, I'll do a little bit more, but that's, that's how you'd get those notches to fit right. I know a lot of the times, especially on the TV, it basically comes out of the notcher and then bloop drops right in. It's not how it happens. There's a lot of grinding to get these notches to fit right. And it just takes time sneaking up at it slowly, but surely, and it'll get to fit. I like how this looks a lot better, especially with this, this bar here. I think instead of having run right across, I think it looks a lot better. I'm still trying to decide uh, how I'm gonna mount the steering column. Steering column mount is probably gonna be somewhere in here. Um, but before I make that decision, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and move the power steering reservoir. Uh, we put it up here because it kind of fit really good when we were there wheeling, but now I don't like how it's like right there in your face. <laughs> when you're off-roading. So I think I'm, I'm gonna move it. I'm gonna take it from this location here. I'm gonna set it over here and I'm gonna bring it down low. So I'm gonna drop it down as low as I can. I'll probably put the tabs off of this bar right here and then it'll be in here. And then what I'll do is I'll make the panel go around it. Uh, the brake mount has to move a little bit too. It's gotta come a little bit further forward because right now the masters are hitting this bar. Not a big deal. Uh, it'll just actually move the pedal a little bit further forward, which will actually be pretty good. Uh, for my feet. Then I'm gonna move the orbital. The orbital is gonna go down right underneath the uh, steering reservoir where it's gonna sit over there. And then I'll just have to build a little, um, basically a small little steering shaft to connect up to it. But that's kind of where Randy puts it on his and it's honestly where I should have put it. But when we were putting this thing together for its first trail ride, we weren't really sure exactly how that was gonna work. And then I gotta make a decision. Uh, the decision is this. Um, so there is a, there is a floor down here. It's gonna be a floor that goes down there and then a little hump that goes over the transmission, that's fine. Um, I really like having the rest of it open because I can see all the tires and wheels. When we built it, all we did is we added this little plate right here. It's got a circuit breaker and a start button. I need to add, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ditch this and I'm gonna be adding basically a Switch Pros kit. I gotta add the Switch Pros mount. So it has to go in there and I need to find a place to mount uh, my rugged radios, radios and comms. I'm really leaning towards putting the rugged radios in between the seats, just cause I think that might be a good fit for it. And then I'm also thinking of ditching that circuit breaker panel and just mounting the switch pros right there. That's all I need. Cause all the gauges in this are just honestly that little Holly dash, which is perfect for this thing. So I think the idea is just keep it super Spartan on the inside. I think that's what I'm gonna do. I was thinking about building a real complicated dash and all this kind of stuff. But I don't need it. The only thing I really want to add, in all honesty, I'm going to add cup holders and I'm going to add, um, like I said, the Switch Pros mount because we've got some off-road lights going in and I'm probably going to put some rock lights on this because if we go to hammers, we might wheel it at night. And uh, that's probably the only change. Oh, and I'm putting a rear chase bar, same reason because we're going to hammers, lots of dust. I want that rear bar in there. So that's the plan. So right now I'm going to move that steering reservoir, brake pedal bracket, and uh, throttle pedal bracket's going to change. It's good, probably going to become part of the actual orbital mount. I haven't really decided that yet, but I'll be cutting that out on the plasma table. working my way from the front to the back. Now I've got this uh, 
little Baja Designs light bar. I've had this around the shop for a while. And so a lot of these bombers, they'll put like a, a big like LP4, like here in the corner, I've seen that design. Um, but I really think this kind of fits right in here perfect. I think it's gonna sit right here, um, just above the motor. It's not gonna block any of my view of the tires and wheels. It's gonna kick out, it's gonna be up and out of the way. Nothing's gonna hit it, no damage. And to mount it, all I gotta do is add a couple of tabs. So I'm just gonna cut some tabs out of the plasma table. Or maybe I'll dig through my, uh, my tab collection. I think I'll dig through my tab collection. See if I got a couple tabs, if I got them, I'll just tack them in the box. So I've got an idea on how to really sort of make this um, steering column work better. So what I did is I grabbed the wheel. I grabbed the wheel right here. And so now what I'm going to do is I know where it's going to be. I want it to be right about there, I think. It's kind of about where I want it. And then I'm just going to add a little, uh, see if you can see on the back side here. So I'll do, this is the quick disconnect. So the quick disconnect here and I'll have the thing there and then it's got a little steering column I think mount right about there and it's going to come off that tube over there and it'll just kind of be like a floating column kind of thing uh, but I think what I'll do to kind of make it look really good is I think I'll do this one on this side and I think on the other side I'm going to do a matching one but instead of a steering wheel that'll be like just like a little hold on handle that is removable as well. So I think I've got this kind of figured out where it's gonna land. I'm pretty comfortable with it right there. Um, and I'll just pull some measurements. I'm gonna use a piece of inch and five eighths with two little bearings inside of it. And I'll show you that once I get it cut. And then I think instead of using a piece of tubing coming off that tube, um, in a couple places on this buggy, I've kind of used some strategic sort of flat plate in some different places. And I think I'm gonna do the same thing on this. So I have completely rebuilt everything that has to do with the driver uh, experience inside the bomber. So that's what we got now. So basically I have changed up the, oops, move all this stuff out of the way. So changed up the steering column now. So now the steering column is kind of like how Randy does. It's kind of just floats out there. This plate uh, looks a little weird right now, but I'll explain it in a minute. Uh, I basically, instead of using a piece of tube, I use this piece of plate and then put in these uh, rectangular cutouts, kind of like I've done with the rest of the car, just kind of tying it all in. And then of course it's all gusseted and everything. Uh, this is just a piece of tubing with some roller bearings in it. And then a U-joint will come out of here and I'll do a little bit of angle and then it will go down into the orbital, which is now mounted basically down here. It is now underneath the, uh, move this stuff. We can look at it from the other side. It is now, tucked up in here instead of being out on the dash. I twisted it sideways. Uh, so basically the lines are now gonna come out over here. They're gonna come out over here. Uh, two will go down to the link. These two will come out and go around the reservoir and come down to the pump. Uh, the reservoir, instead of being mounted off the clamp, I actually included it as part of my new brake pedal bracket. I just put a little bend right here. So this bolts off here. And then I've got this upright that not only helps support the brake pedal bracket, which also has these little rectangles cut out of it like the rest. But now this is also my new throttle pedal position. I actually was able to move the throttle pedal forward about three inches, which is super comfortable for the driver. Now, that little spot right there. Let me explain to you what that's all about. So the Terminator that runs this uh, engine has this little handheld that comes with it. And the handheld for the Terminator has all the information from the engine. It's basically a full set of gauges and everything that you need. And what I'm gonna do is it is gonna mount basically 
right here. So it's gonna mount right here so you can see it from the driver's seat. And then what I also have, like I love to put in these rigs, is an actual Switch Pros switch panel. The Switch Pros switch panel will mount right here. So this will be where I get and I've tested this and even with the steering wheel on, it's easy to get to all the stuff. Now, everything that's on here, I don't need to access it a lot because this car just has spools front and rear. So it's not like I need to go in there and like turn the lockers on and off. It'll just be for the front mounted light, which I've added. I've added this rear chase bar on the back. So now I have a chase light on the back. I'm gonna be adding uh, some rock lights. Uh, I'm gonna be adding some interior lights just to make it look good underneath. I'm doing like a blue LED rock light as well as a blue interior light. And then, oh, and then I'll have everything to run the motor self ignition turn on. I'll run the start uh, starter off of that Switch Pros. I'll run the chase light. Uh, it has a brake light built in. My uh, uh, Willwood brake master cylinders already have a pressurized brake switch in there. So that'll light up the brake light. So I'll have rear chase light. I'll have the brake lights in the back, which is nice to have when you're on the desert and it's super dusty. Uh, and then I'll also have an on and off switch for my comms because I'm adding rugged radios to this as well. All I have to add now inside of there is the mount for the rugged radios. And at the same time, I'm going to mount some cup holders. And so that's done. So I'm waiting for the radios to get here before I uh, build that. So while I'm waiting for that, what I've started to work on is the skins. So I'm going to be doing a roof skin you can see i added all these tabs on here so this is going to be the roof skin i'm just working on getting a rough cut on it i'm trying to decide how far out i'm going to come whether they're going to come to the edge of the tube or if i'm going to put a little wrap in it and come around the edge of the tube i'm going to cut it uh probably right to the top edge of the tube test fit it and see what it looks like and then i just basically have to contour it to this roll but uh all that is done once again at my fast cut cnc plasma table Now what I'll do is basically clamp it where all the tabs are to hold it. I'm gonna, the roll is easy. It's this bend right here that gets a little tricky, but the bend only really happens in the middle. Um, instead of trying to figure out the actual shape, I went ahead and I just made it long. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull it down here with a clamp. Once it's clamped everywhere, that way it'll start to pull this edge. And then what I'll do is I'll mark Underneath here, I'll just mark the front edge of the panel and then I'll just trim it to fit and uh, probably even pull a little, I'm gonna cut it a little long at the front and I'm gonna put it through the bead roller and do a little, it's called a little hemming edge. So it rolls around that tube really good. So I'm gonna make it a little bit longer than that tube. Then when I roll it through the bead roller, it'll have a nice finished look. Okay, so here in the shop today, it's the weekend and we have some guests. Russell's here from Fast Cut CNC. Hello, hello. He brought his What's your name again? Steve. Steve's here and Steve's gonna cut something. We have a very special job we're gonna try and finish today quickly. And then we're gonna make a quick road trip up the road. But uh, you all know how much I love my fast cut table. And uh, Russell's in town helping out our good friend Derek at Vice Grip Garage, getting his table all set up. And he was like, hey man, I'm in town. I should pop over and visit. And I said, great, I got a sign to cut. And I don't do signs, but uh, they know signs. They know how to make that table cut a sign out so i got a foreign substance over here in the shop which is some uh some weird thing stuff here some wood that's a weird thing to have so i'm gonna make uh make something out of wood they're gonna cut something out of steel and we're gonna do some magic to it oh, uh,
so we got our bed of the sign. I basically hit it with the torch, blacked it all out. We got the sign cut out over there. And then what he's gonna do is gonna bring it over here and we're gonna mount it onto the wood and we're gonna step it off about an inch and see what it looks like. in the back of the truck. Uh, Russ is headed to his hotel to drop off his rental car and I'm gonna grab those two guys and then we're gonna run up the highway to see our friends at H. Clark. Well, no, not H. Clark Distilling anymore. It used to be H. Clark Distilling. Now it is Company Distilling. That's what this sign is for. So uh, Heath at H. Clark, super cool cat. Um, met him years ago on one of my whiskey and wheeling trips that I'd planned. Um, and we've just become friends ever since. He and Jeff Arnett teamed up to create Company Distilling. And so he had asked me if I could build him a sign at some point in time. And I just really haven't had the time to do it until now when I figured Russ is coming into town. Um, him and Steve, they, they know that table and that software like back of their hand and they can make the uh, logo look perfect before we cut it out and they did it looks awesome throwing together the little backdrop of uh, wood that I put together on the fab table actually worked out really well too so we're gonna run it up to uh, Heath he's gonna see it for the first time I haven't even posted a picture on social media yet because uh, I know he follows me and I don't want to let him know that oh hey guess what your signs on its way I called him make sure he's there he's gonna meet us at the uh, at the distillery and uh, we're gonna get his reaction for the sign hopefully he likes it uh, it's really was just a fun quick project that allowed us to uh, do some fine tuning on the CNC, which uh, Russ and Steve wanted to do anyway. Just want to check the table out, give it a quick table tune up, so to speak. Um, and that's one thing, you know, I've said it many times about my CNC table. I love my fast cut table. I think it works great. But the support that you get from uh, Russ and his team, second to none. There's been times when I've had trouble with that table. Um, just I've clicked the wrong thing and I couldn't figure out what I had clicked and uh, I could text Russ, call Russ and he has one of his tech guys immediately either jump on the phone and call me or they do like a live screen share where they can actually run my computer remotely and he'll walk me through what I did wrong and then I learn and I don't need his help anymore which is great. So the support they give you after, after getting the table, second to none and the cut quality is absolutely amazing too. Um, I'm sure you've seen a bunch of people who are part of that fast cut team uh, showing off what they're cutting. Uh, some people cut some seriously thick stuff. The thickest I've cut with is, is 3 8 of an inch. Um, and it was real messy hot rolled 3 8 and so I got a ton of dross. But with a little bit of fine tuning on the machine, uh, thanks to Charlie and Ross, I was, or Charlie and Ross, I was able to get a better cut quality on it. So uh, I'm excited to see uh, what he thinks of his sign. Uh, the only downfall is, is I got a sneaking suspicion I'm going to be making a whole bunch more of these signs in the near future. We'll wait and see. It was fun. Only took a couple hours to do. I could knock another one of these things out in no time flat. I hope you like some. So we dropped sign off over at Company Distilling. Heath uh, loved it, which is awesome. And so now I'm back in the shop today, back on the bomber. Plan today is to finish up uh, my skins. You can see I got my roof panel in place. Um, it's kind of tricky because there's a there's a roll here, like there's just a bend, but it actually is flat right up to here. And the bend is kind of just in the middle of the panel. So I think what I'm gonna do is I've clamped it down onto the roof. Uh, I think I'm going to mark the tube underneath here because it does have a little, it kind of comes this way and then turns that way and goes back. So I'm going to mark that um, and then I'm going to cut the roof to fit and then I'll just put the bend where it needs to be. I think the bend kind of just needs to be in that center part of the panel. I'll get that done. Uh, then I'll jump onto these pieces uh, that are going to go right into here, the section I'm putting. Um, Randy doesn't put a filler piece here. I, he puts a hood 
Um, I'm opting for no hood because I kind of really like the motor. I think it kind of looks cool. And so I'm going to do a piece here and a piece here for two reasons. Not so much on this side, um, but on the other side, I think it's going to look kind of cool if I do that over here because it'll cover up... Uh, It'll cover up this stuff. So it'll cover up, you won't see the master cylinder, you won't see the orbital, you won't see the lines. You'll see it from the side, but just from up here, it'll look a lot cleaner. Uh, this panel, I'll basically make it so it kind of comes out, goes out, and then there'll be a, a, a basically a, a half moon type of thing right here so I can get to the, uh, the power steering reservoir. But I think I'll just clean that up a lot. Um, I think that's going to make it look uh, look pretty cool, kind of different. I think it'll look kind of cool. And then, as I said before, then it's just skins on the side. That's all I'm doing. I think I'm even those. I cut those floors out. They were like rough floors just for the trip to a hot springs. But I think I'm actually going to run with those. I'm just going to leave those as it is. I'm just going to add some tabs to bolt those uh, onto, and uh, and just keep going from there. So, trim, cut roof, get it bolted down, and then filler panel, filler panel. Just keep plugging away with the with the aluminum. So I've marked the, the tube right here on this line. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use my uh, hand shear. I'm gonna come just a little bit proud of this line and then I'll come back and grind to it and then I'll test fit it on the car and uh, see what it looks like. I may end up running a, a little hemmed edge on it. I may run it through the bead roll and put a little hemmed edge on it. We'll see what it looks like when it's all said and done. But when you're doing stuff like this, um, it's best just kind of sneak up on it. So I'm gonna try to just kind of stay the outside of that line because I can grind to it, make it look a lot better. easy when you're freehanding stuff like this to just kind of get a little bit over anxious with the uh, hand grinder once again uh, my hand grinder has a flap disc that is made for aluminum I've told you that before make sure uh, when you're working with aluminum you actually get uh, uh, grinding discs flap discs everything is specifically made for aluminum so this is once again a benchmark abrasives flap disc that's designed to be used with aluminum uh, and what I've done is I basically just set up this is gonna be a guide I'm basically this is the line that I'm kind of chasing to I'm gonna come to the inside of this line that I had drawn on here I test fit it and it uh, it's a little bit long, so I'm going to pull it back to this line. This is going to make sure it stays nice and straight by clamping it down to my uh, Flexture Fab Table. Nothing's going to move. I don't have to worry about anything kind of getting all wiggly and out of line. All I got to do is grind to that edge, grind the other section the same, and then just round the corners, and then we'll test fit it. What I need to do now is basically just put a little bit of a bend right here in this sheet. This front end has got to drop down a little bit um, and then that'll tell me if I have to trim a little bit more off this. I basically want this 
to kind of land in the middle of the tube like the side is the sides kind of landing right in the middle of the tube the back the back can actually cheat uh, back a little bit and then I could actually hem this end to fit if I wanted to but um, I'm kind of just keeping everything long right now but I really won't know how it fits until I get a bend across here now I don't want to put it in a sheet metal brake to do the bend because I don't want a harsh bend I just want a little bit of a radius bend so what I'm actually going to do is I'll clamp this to the fab table and then I'll just take uh, I'll put the um, I'll basically put the uh, angle iron across here on the fab table and then I'll just kind of just try to muscle it down a little bit um, if that doesn't work then I'll flip it around and bend this end here but I'm just going to try to massage it slightly so this end I just want this end to just have a little bit of a radius bend in it. actually not too bad you can see I'll clamp it back in place to see because you can see now I've just got this pulling down here um, there's a little bit of a line across that sheet but uh, nothing obnoxious you can sort of see it's just kind of tucking down into the front uh, this will come down into here like this I'm gonna clamp it double check all of the uh, positions of it and then I don't even think I'm gonna have to hem it here it's a little proud of the tube so we might do a slight hem on this end but I'll wait and see Now the side panel on the bomber car is actually pretty simple. It's just a big flat panel. It's just going to go down and across. The thing that's tricky though is uh, this piece is leaning back. This tube actually runs downhill slightly and then right here goes, there's a bend right here and it goes up to here and then this tube's leaned back slightly. Uh, so the best way to do that actually is honestly with a framing square. So let me see if I can find my framing square. I know it's around here somewhere. <laughs> there it is. This is just standard framing square like you would use if you were a carpenter. And the best way to figure this out is we know that the, I'm gonna be making the bottom of this panel straight. And so what I'll do is I'm just gonna pull it over here. I know it will stop right here. And so then what I'll do is I'll measure up here and then back here to where this point is. So for an example right here, if I come back here like this, like this, I'm gonna put this on here where it's gonna sit, right there, like that. I know that the top at that location is gonna be up, I think we'll go up 18 and three quarters of an inch. That should put it right in the center of that tube, I think, if it sits on the bottom of that. Uh, one thing you, that you can do, what Randy does when he brings this panel down, is he actually puts a little bend in it out, and that'll give you a spot to run. Uh, I can, you can run stuff in between the panel and the tube, that way it's not on the inside. So I might do the same thing down here. I may go ahead and do that same little, uh, same little bend on the bottom. So what I'll do is I'll just add like a little extra bit of length, and then uh, I'll have to check. I have to make sure I can fit that in my sheet metal brake. I'll measure that first. If I can fit, it, fit in the sheet metal brake, I'll do that little lip. If I can't fit in the sheet metal brake, I'm not gonna do that lip. So what I'll do right now is figure that out, draw it on Bentec, and then we'll cut it out on the plaza table. So I've drawn the uh, 
drawing the skin out here on uh, Bentec, one thing I did do is I added this little kick out right here. And that is because I noticed whenever I was getting in the car in and out, I was always putting my foot right here. So I was always putting my foot right in that, that spot in the chassis right there. And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to make sure that I left an opening there for me to get my foot in and out of. That way it's easy to get in and out of. You're not just kind of trying to stand on the edge of this uh, little lip right here. I'm just going to make it easier to get in and out of the rig. So I've added that to it. And now all I got to do is uh, basically get out a chunk of aluminum and chop it out. Uh, I lucked out a long time ago. I bought a whole bunch of sheets of aluminum. I was just kind of stocking up the shop and uh, I just got a whole bunch of sheets and I never sheared them off. Normally I shear everything at four feet because I don't think anything bigger than four feet, but that skin's longer than four feet. I think it's a total of like almost 50 inches. So I should be able to get both skins out of one four by eight sheet. We should be good on that, but I just got to get the sheet out from behind the toolbox and get it onto the table. <laughs> on right now is the front pieces and I'll show you how I'm doing this basic basically the way this works is I drop a uh, framing square along the bottom so this is where I want the edge of this piece to ride and I'm gonna the corner is gonna be right here and so I'm gonna drop a pick point in Bentec Pro right at that edge right there so that's 17 and a quarter and then I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna come across and I know that at the basically at the 14 mark right there I'm gonna come over to the this section right here I'm going on there this section right here so at the 14 mark at this intersection right there that's seven inches so seven inches right there so seven inches right there 14 up seven back so the way this works is it's 17 and a quarter over 14 inches up and seven inches back and then I draw that triangle first so oh look who's in the shop today Zelda's here hi Zelda say hello to everybody say hi 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 say hi oh big puppy stretch oh yeah Zelda's in the shop she's such a good dog okay so we come over here to Ben Tech Pro over here I've already got it fired up so I said incremental 17.25 inches over that's that one then we're gonna go up 14 14 and back seven that's gonna put that one right there and then I can draw the lines boom 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 that is the triangle that I need to cut out to fill that spot. And then what we've been doing is I've been just doing like a little fillet. I've been doing a half inch, oops, been doing a half inch radius on all the corners. So I'm going to come here, here, there and there, there and there. Now on this one, I want to cut out for the uh, actual this one right here I need to basically cut out this I need to cut out for the for the power steering reservoir and so in that case what I need to do 
is I want to come up here and I want to still be able to get my fingers in here. So I could just come up and just make a big half circle or I could come up here, come here and then go around it like that. Hmm. You know what I might try and do? I might try to measure the center of this, draw me a circle and then trim it and see what happens. Now with all the panels kind of mocked up into place, you can see how it turned out. I really like it. I think this really finishes off the top of the car. I think it looks really good. You can see I still have access to my uh, power steering reservoir. It'll be in there. I can easily get in there and fill it up. I'm really contemplating whether or not I put a filler panel in there. Um, it's a six of one, half a dozen of the other. If I don't, I get to see the tire. If I do, um, then uh, I don't think I can see the tire, but I also think it really finishes off that inside piece right there. So I'm really not 100% certain what I'm gonna do. I might, hmm, I'm contemplating just mocking it up with a piece in there um, and seeing what it looks like. Um, no, I think I'm just gonna leave it empty. I think I'm, I think I'm overthinking it. I like the roof, I like the sides, I like those little dash filler panels. I think when that's all said and done, I think it looks like a really cool car. So now what I gotta do is figure out where all the tabs are gonna go for all these panels. I can put them on, tack them into place, and then figure it out. What I'll do is I'll wait until, the last thing I'll do is drill holes in these panels. I'll wait until everything's welded, everything's done, and uh, then I can go ahead and drill some holes uh, through them, and I'll show you how I'm gonna attach them. that I am doing is I'm actually just kind of adding a hemmed edge to the edge of the panel so you can see right here you can see right here I just put a little bit of a hemmed edge it's hard to kind of see you can kind of if you look down it you can see it's kind of got a little dropped edge on it now it's kind of hard to see but basically it just kind of dresses it up I mean you can leave it you can see the difference when you compare this panel kind of to that panel. Um, it just kind of gives it a nice little roll along this this edge right here. Just kind of falls back in, kind of looks good. And so what I'm gonna do, and then especially around this thing right here, I think it looks really good. And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna have to touch up here because the hemmed edge now dropped it down and brought this up. So I'll probably hammer this hem out, a little hammer and dolly work right here at the end. And then because this is down so low, but I'm just going to take them all over to the bead roller and just do that little edge on all of them. It just kind of, kind of like, just kind of sharpens it up a little bit. Just gives it a, just give it a better look. You know what I mean? I just think it looks, looks a lot nicer when it's all said and done. I'll get that done. And then, uh, then I'm done with skins. So what I'm gonna work on now is all of my zip tie tabs. And so 
In order to do that, it's honestly going to be easier just to take a bunch of stuff and get it out of the truck. So, our buggy, I should say. So, on the back of this buggy, uh, you know, we've got the, this vent line here. It comes around for the fuel cell. It comes around here. Obviously, we just added a zip tie here. And then another one here, another one here. Uh, when it comes to these vent lines, what you want to do is uh, you want to basically make it so if the vehicle's upside down, uh, the fuel doesn't just keep pouring out of the vent. So you want the vent line to go basically across the tank and then down and be a below the tank because that way when the tank is upside down, uh, fluid always finds its own level. And so when the tank is upside down, the fluid won't pour out because the vent line is actually now above the tank because before it was below the tank. So what I'm going to do to make this a lot easier for myself is I'm going to go around on the chassis and I'm just going to mark where I want the zip tie tabs just with a paint pen and that way I'll just know that's where I want one and then I'll just go ahead and just weld them on. I'm going to TIG weld them on just because they're so small. You can see these things, they're tiny, right? So these things are so tiny. I mean, I guess I could MIG weld them, but it's going to be just as easy just to set it in place and just go ahead and hit it with the TIG welder. Uh, it'll be a lot cleaner, it'll just be a lot easier. And uh, in the long run, Oh, it's exciting. Uh, my new truck just got dropped off here at the shop. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. Um, man, all these YouTubers are always buying all these new trucks, new cars, new trucks all the time. You see them all the posting them up. Oh, look at this. But wait till you see this thing, man. This thing is so cool. There it is, fresh from the co-parts. So the hauler just dropped this thing off. This is a 2015 Ford, I think it's in, it's on Expedition. That's what it is, 2015 Ford Expedition. This thing is sweet. I know you're probably wondering why would I buy a 2015 Ford Expedition? I bought it for one thing and one thing only. Key fob works and everything. I bought it for this. Let me show you. That right there is a 3.5 V6 EcoBoost engine. See right there? V6. 3.5 backed up by a 6R80 transmission. I bought this whole truck just for that engine and transmission. I got a project on four wheeler next year that I was kind of dancing around what engine I was going to put in it. And uh, I got this wild idea I want a V6 in this truck. And when you see the truck, you'll understand why. And that thing is like 400 horsepower. I mean, look at that thing. It moves that. It moves this truck. This is not a light truck, that's a big truck big SUV um, and so I shopped around I shopped around for a bunch of uh, I wanted to buy just the engine like a takeout from somebody and they were so expensive I couldn't find a good deal on one so I bought the whole truck uh, this whole truck I paid six thousand bucks 
for the whole truck. And starts right up. Starts right up. Runs and drives. Everything works. You can see low fuel will light, but no service engine lights or anything. I mean, how many miles are on this thing? This thing has, let's see if all this stuff works. 150, 158,000 miles. So it's got some miles on it. Um, man, I couldn't say no. I couldn't say no. Such, I mean, I think it was, actually it was 40, 4,600. And then by the time I paid for the delivery and everything, I think it was like six grand to get it here. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to use the transfer case out of this truck. Uh, that is a question that I'm unsure of. Uh, talking to my harness guy, he's not sure if he can get the transmission shifter to work. But it'd be kind of cool if I could. If not, I can adapt it to a Jeep transfer case. It's no big deal. But yeah, I mean, e everything, everything's here. And uh, it was like half the price of buying. I priced a 3.5 takeout from a junkyard. So that was engine, transmission, transfer case, the computer, the wiring harness, all the connectors, everything that I would need, throttle pedal, everything I would need to do the swap. And they wanted $12,000. So buying this truck at six grand was a deal it was an absolute deal um i don't know what i'm gonna do with the rest of the truck um part of me had thought about maybe swapping all the interior over into the project but it's it's just not gonna work right and plus it's this light tan color so i honestly think what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna sell it i'm gonna strip the engine transmission transfer case out take the wiring out it and i'll sell it to somebody I, I, someone might want it for the interior i mean it's not in bad shape it's got uh, the three row seats, all that kind of jazz. Um, so yeah, so hey, if, if, <laughs> if you're in the market for a 2015 Ford Expedition um, with no throttle pedal, no shifter, because I think I need this. No, I don't need this shifter. I can get an aftermarket shifter. So no throttle pedal, no engine, no transmission, no transfer case, no wiring, no computer, let me know. Maybe you want to build something out of it. I don't know. Or maybe you need it for parts. But yeah, I'll sell this thing. I'll let it go for a couple grand. I mean, this, this interior has got to be worth 2000 bucks. But but that's awesome. This thing's so cool. Revs up good. I mean, God. I'm a sucker. I'm a sucker for wrecking yard and stuff like that. I mean, I got to... He <laughs> security works. I mean, it's even got good wheels and tires on it. So yeah, so if you're looking for one of those without a drivetrain, let me know. I'll cut you a good deal on it. I'd like to make at least a couple grand out of it. I think I should be able to. All right. Anyway, the uh, hauler just dropped that off. I got all excited. Had to run out and take a look at it, sign all the paperwork. But uh, there we go. Yet another junk truck to park out back. So I've got the zip tie tabs all the way around the perimeter of the tank there. I put the ones up here uh, for that section. I think uh, I'm trying to decide if I'm going to put one uh, here as well, because these are going to be going to come down and then just drop straight down into where uh, I think the Switch Pros is actually going to mount like the brain for it. It's going to mount right there. I need to make sure that I got enough wire to get from where the head unit's gonna be, it's gotta come down a tube across the seat and then back and up into there. Uh, and then it's gotta add some at the front here uh, for the for this light. I wanna have these wires here come across here. So I'm gonna put one right there and then one on this tube here that is gonna go across. These ones will come underneath. And then I think I'm just gonna do some down this tube right here as well as probably a couple down this tube right here because basically way it's going to work is the wires are going to go down this tube under the seat and then back uh the brake lines go down this tube and the steering lines will come down this tube so i still have a couple more to add they're all going to be down in those sections down there uh, i also want to make sure that my uh, holly terminator can make it up there which i think it can so i'm going to pull the wire out for the switch pros make sure it's long enough
right, so with all of those tabs added for the panels, the panels made, the edges hemmed, my zip tie tabs in place, I've got my new steering column taken care of, my new orbital ram mount taken care of, everything done that basically now I just gotta strip this chassis down. So what I'll do is everything's gonna come out of here now. Uh, the motor needs to go back to my engine guy. It started to make a little bit of noise on the trail ride, so I'm gonna have him fix that. Uh, and then I'm gonna weld all the tabs in. Uh, I've already welded all the zip tie tabs because I was TIG welding them and I just got it all out and got it all knocked out at a one one time, but I need to weld in all these tabs here. So I gotta weld in all the tabs for the sheet metal and then weld these tubes in as well as this uh, new steering column mount. Get it all welded in. Uh, I did check. I do have enough length in both the Switch Pro's harness as well as the Holly Terminator to get the screen mounted up by the steering wheel, which I think is gonna look really, really good when it's all said and done. So I'll just keep stripping this car down. Um, I do need to make one more thing for it, but, but they're just not here yet. I'm waiting on my rugged radios, radios and um, headsets and intercom because I want to have that in this car. That's pretty much the last thing I want to do to it. Um, I am going to change up the exhaust, but that can be done after powder coat. Uh, so that's it. Now I'm going to pause on this project because I actually have to jump out of town right now, head up to the PRI show in Indianapolis. Uh, I got to talk some business up there with some businessy folks and uh, just sort of see what's new in the world of racing. I love PRI is actually a really fun show. It's you think it's all racing, but there's some cool off road racing stuff in there, too. And it's just neat to see. I love race cars. I think they're super cool. So that's the plan. And then next week, we're actually bringing the Cummins two Cummins vehicles in because we've got to start filming on that for 4x4 Garage. We need to knock out one of those episodes before the end of the year. So probably over the weekend, I'll prep the shop and then we'll film on that next week.